It's SEC tournament time in Hoover, Alabama. One of the most fun weeks of the entire year is officially here where all eyes in the college baseball world turn their attention to the SEC baseball tournament. Help me break it all down. My good friend, Harrison Fant, he's joined me all throughout this regular season on the windup, and we are here ecstatic to be talking postseason play in the SEC. Harrison, what's going on, my man? appreciate you taking the time. Chris, great to be here. I'm just excited for the SEC tournament and postseason college baseballs. We're 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 there. It fit, we're right there, and the adrenaline's there. The it's awesome, and we just I can't wait for it to start on Tuesday. And you will be in Hoover, by the way, boots on the ground. So if you're in Hoover, yes, Alabama, sir. you see Harrison wandering around the next couple of days. Make sure you say something to him, holler at Absolutely. him, what have you. He'd love to talk some college baseball. Um, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and run right into it. We're going to dive into this thing. Uh, we're going to pull up the bracket here in just a moment. We're going to give our game-by-game -game predictions for the SEC tournament. Harrison's got his picks written down. I've got mine on this tiny sheet of paper. We're going to get after it today, talking all things again, SEC baseball tournament. The seeds are as follows. The number one seed, the Tennessee Volunteers, your co-SEC regular season champions. They swept South Carolina to secure that title. They are your one seed. Number two seed, your SEC West champions, Arkansas. The three seed, Kentucky, who is also the co-SEC regular season champions with Tennessee. Texas A&M, the four. We've got, as I jump around, Mississippi State, the five. Uh, let's see, Georgia, the six. The bracket's all over the place. Bama's the seven. Vandy's the eight. Florida's the nine. South Carolina's the 10. LSU's the 11. Ole Miss is the 12. Harrison, before we go any further, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Tennessee or Kentucky, who's the real SEC regular season champion? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, there's a lot of debate up with this, and it's rightfully so. I mean, if you think about it, you talk about RPI, you talk about a lot of factors that kind of go into it. T Texas A&M is the number one RPI in the country. T Kentucky actually dropped down two slot spots this past weekend to three after their series against Vanderbilt, but they still own the most quad one wins in college baseball at 19 and six in A&M, 14 and 11, but full body of work. I think you got to go A&M. I think you have to go in. And that's, that's who I believe is the number one team in the country. I would go with Tennessee just because I do believe in the tiebreaker. I don't know why we have a co-champion. I don't really understand it. It doesn't um, make that much sense. And, and I'm not taking anything away from Kentucky, but it's just like Tennessee beat Kentucky. That's kind of where the conversation. At, at Kentucky. At Kentucky. So that's kind of where the conversation ends for me again. No other sport do we have this split, this co-champion thing. But, uh, no, it, it's been a fun conversation. We actually put up a poll, Harrison. I'm not sure if you saw this. We put up a poll on yep. social media just uh, just asking the question, okay, so who is the real SEC champion? I want to highlight this poll because it's got four hours left at the time of speaking on this poll. It's got 7,629 votes. So, Tennessee fans and Kentucky fans found this poll, ran with it, 90% have voted Tennessee is the real SEC champion. So credit to Vol Nation. When they have a cause in mind and they have something they want to make their voices heard, they do it, and they do it well. And that's why we love Tennessee fans. Sounds They're like head-to-head -head matters for fans. <laughs> it does. It does indeed. Uh, as we look at the bracket, Harrison, like I mentioned, guys, we're going to pull up the bracket here in just a moment. We're going to give our official game-by-game -game predictions. When you look at this bracket, Harrison, we were talking about off area. It, it's an imperfect science when it comes to the SEC tournament, Hoover. Um, you know, you kind of almost throw regular season records out the window. Uh, this is where a new season begins, if you will. You can kind of get that vibe of everybody's 0-0. Uh, you've got some teams that are secure in their standing. They're either going to be a top eight national seed or they know they're going to be a host or at minimum, they know they're going to be in the postseason. Harrison, I think you've got some other ball clubs that come into this week with some desperation, right? They're fighting for their postseason lives. So with that being said, you look at the seeds, you look at the bracket. Is there a team that you look at as you feel like is the favorite in your mind coming into the week? If you had to pick a team, is there one that jumps out to you that you feel like that team, for whatever reason, whatever the reasoning is in your mind, stands out as the favorite to win the whole thing? Yeah, Chris, for me, I – it's going to lean again on my pick of the SEC champion. I think it's AM. I just think the full body of work, the talent they have up and down the lineup, the pitching staff, the experience they have too in postseason. I just think that's a huge factor going into the postseason compared to 
you know, like a, like a Georgia in recent years or a Kentucky, you know, or uh, some other schools. But I, I, for me, I think that's a huge factor and that's going to travel. And Jim Slossangle and his ball club are going to, they're going to be ready to go. And they're riding off a really, really great series win against a very, very good top five ranked Arkansas Razorback team. Yeah, Harrison, I, I like Texas A&M. Um, I like that pick a lot. I, I'm going to go Tennessee, though. Um, I, I just think the balls are red hot, the way they're playing. Coming off a sweep of South Carolina, you clinch again, co-SEC champions. I, you know, I, I think they are the favorite. I'm not saying they're going to win the whole thing again. You're going to know in just a moment who I'm picking. But I think Tennessee is red hot. I, I love what they've got on the mound. I love the way they're swinging it. Christian Moore is playing out of his freaking mind. we got a debate right now for who the SEC player of the year should be, and people can't make up their minds. Christian Moore certainly is making his case, but I think Tennessee's as hot as anybody. And I, I would, in my opinion, I would proclaim them the favorite going in. That, that's my feel that they are the favorite. The number one overall thing. team being the favorite. I, they, I mean, yes, they are the number one overall seeds. I mean, I know that's a, that might kind of feel like a cop out, but I think the way they're winning as well, and this is a Tennessee team, nine straight series wins in the SEC. Wildly impressive. Uh, how about sleeper, Haverson? When you look at, again, a non top four seed, right? We're talking a, a real sleeper. Is there a team in the tournament you look at? And again, we see this all the time, right? There is some years where it goes chalk, right? No mistake. But a lot of times, this thing gets wild. This thing gets crazy. We see nine seeds and 10 seeds and 11 seeds that are making it to Friday and Saturday. Uh, looking at the bracket, who is the biggest sleeper of the tournament in your mind? Yeah, Chris, I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but it's got to be for me the Florida Gators. Just based off okay. the experience in the postseason they have, Kevin O'Sullivan, a fantastic head baseball coach, and just the sure talent they have on the roster. Yes, they've been very inconsistent this year. they played one of the toughest schedules in the country, you can argue, and during the midweeks, which they've struggled to. But they come into this pretty hot with a huge series win on the road at Georgia, swinging the sticks unlike any other team on the road. And it's just it's potentially the perfect storm for them to go on a hot run here and not you know be a favorite to win it, but – play for desperation to get in the tournament as well. So I think that's a big factor for me. That's why it's the Florida Gators. Harrison, I'm going to go the other disappointment of the SEC. I'm going to go LSU. I mean, and it's these are, <laughs> these are Harrison and I, they're sexy picks because we know how talented both these teams are. Um, you know, there's things I like and dislike about every single one of these teams outside of the top four seeds. Uh, I mean, a lot of them can swing it really well, but the pitching is suspect. There's a couple that are the reverse. Um you know, LSU is a team, though, Harrison. I just, you know, they're they're desperate. They're fighting for their postseason lives, like we mentioned. They need to win a game or two in Hoover to really feel good about getting in the postseason. I, I, I do think, though, LSU, you know, you have to think they are going to give their absolute best effort in Hoover. And I have to think their best effort is going to be good enough, potentially, not spoiling my picks, potentially, to win a game or two. You know what I mean? So, you talk about a team with postseason experience. I know this isn't last year's team, but still, there's a plethora of postseason experience on this roster. And uh, so I think LSU is dangerous. I'm not saying they're going to win the whole Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. But uh, I do think that they are dangerous. So they got a real tough draw in the first, first game. They do. Uh, they do. Though. They do. And that's a great segue, Harrison. We're going to go ahead and get into this thing. We're going to go ahead and pull up the bracket here. So you see it in all its glory. The SEC Baseball Tournament Bracket. And guys, if you thought the bracket was confusing, you're absolutely right. So we're going to go through this. I'm going to walk us through game by game. Harrison, I'm going to do my very, very best. Really, we're just going to go game by game. Game one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, we're just going to go down this list. We're going to do our best to make it simple. But you guys, at minimum, are going to know who we're picking for each and every single game. So again, you see the bracket and all its glory. Haverson, let's go ahead and dive into this freaking thing. We will start with game one, the game that's going to kick us off on Tuesday morning, 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. The 6 seed Georgia takes on the 11 seed LSU. Who are you going with? Yeah, Chris, I think it's a fantastic matchup, and it's going to be a very, very tough competitive game. But I, I've got Georgia in game one opening it defeating the defending champion LSU Tigers. And I think it's going to be a nail biter. It's going to be the difference of the game is going to be one swing of the bat, Charlie Condon probably, but also maybe a Corey Collins or Trey Phillips who have both had fantastic years for the Georgia Bulldogs. And I think just Georgia has a bad taste in their mouth after dropping their final home game and final home series against Florida. And just, 
I think they're going to go in with a lot of momentum and a lot of grit. And having Wes Johnson as their head coach, who was the pitching coach at LSU last year, he's going to know exactly what buttons to push and what to do. He's going to make the right moves at the right time. And I think that's going to give him the edge in this one. Harrison, I just told you, a desperate Bayou Bengals team is a dangerous Bayou Bengals team. Absolutely. Give me, give me LSU. I, I think LSU is going to win a game at Hoover, man. I think they have to. I think their backs are against the wall. I I like Georgia a lot. I don't trust Georgia's pitching. I, I'm not saying LSU's pitching is something to write home about either. I trust them for one game at least. For one game, right, right, for one game. It, it's going to be a great game, like you mentioned. What a way to kick off things in Hoover. I do think LSU, though, they need this one more than Georgia. I think they're going to find a way to scratch claw and win this ball game. Absolutely. Uh, how about I do, seven? I do think yeah, LSU can go on a run, though. I absolutely do think so. Stay tuned, Harrison. Stay tuned. <laughs> how about the seven seed, Bama? <laughs> Taking on the 10 seed South Carolina, Harrison, I mentioned this stat to you off the air. Uh, I've made my comments and my thoughts on, on South Carolina baseball and what they need to do after the season's end. Very public, obviously, across social media. Um, South Carolina, even when they have been their best, I'm talking about 10, 11, 12, when they won back-to-back -back national titles. You ask any South Carolina fan about – and, and consumer of Gamecock baseball about the struggles in Hoover, Alabama. Boy, they'll have a story to tell you. Over the last 18 seasons, South Carolina is 13-32 and 32 in Hoover. For whatever reason, Carolina baseball and Hoover are like oil and water, and it's always tough to play Bama in Hoover. I mean, it's essentially a home game for them. Uh, I am going to go the Alabama Crimson Tide. I, I just I wouldn't trust South Carolina with anything right now. They're losers of six straight. Uh, we're sitting there, potentially could have hosted, lost six straight SEC games. This is a team that's reeling. You know, I know Bama's got problems of their own, but I think power pitching, they're going to dominate that South Carolina lineup, and I just think South Carolina, for whatever reason, I, I don't know what it is about Hoover, but they don't win there. Give me Bama to win this game. Yeah, Chris, and we're going to have to disagree again because I'm going I'm going South Carolina Gamecocks with this one. Okay. I think for the similar reason, I think just desperation mode and how bad they've been playing to end the regular season, losing – out on a, a pro, losing out on a regional, I believe, and I've believed for about two weeks now. But I think just desperation mode, they're going to pull all the strings to be able to, hey, our back's against the wall. This is like a game seven for them, hmm. right? And I think, yes, it's more of a home field kind of home game for Alabama and the Crimson Tide being that close to Tuscaloosa. But I just think South Carolina's good. Something's going to happen. They're going to lay a sack bunt down that gets thrown in the outfield, <laughs> something like that. It's going to be a scrappy game, like a four, five, four game, you know, a seven, six game. And I just, I don't know, something weird is going to happen. I got South Carolina just edging out the Alabama Crimson Tide. And to your point, Harrison, this is a game for South Carolina where, again, both these teams fighting for the postseason. I, I think South Carolina is going to get in, but you don't feel comfortable right now losing six straight. The RPI and everything is probably going to get them in. But if you're on that, if, if for any of these teams, if you're on that 13 win mark, you really like to get a win or two to help boost your resume. Uh, let's go to the eight seed Vandy taking on the nine seed Florida Harrison. I'm going with the Florida Gators. This should come as no surprise to you. I don't believe in Vandy. I haven't for quite some time. Uh, give me Florida to win this one. Yeah. Vanderbilt on the road. I'm going to have to go with Florida Gators, especially <laughs> with how they're playing. With how they're Vandy playing on the road. Automatic this. L. Automatic L. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just as great of a pitching staff as they have starting pitching wise specifically, just on the road, they've just had consistent struggles, which is, it's just so odd. I mean, I know you have Tim, Tim Corbin, which is a fantastic coach against Kevin O'Sullivan. I just think Florida comes in this red hot. The bats are way too powerful to, for – their offense is significantly better than Vanderbilt's offense, up and down the lineup. And I just think that they're going to outslug Vanderbilt by far. And they're going to come in – like I said, they're coming in really hot with a lot to prove and a lot to win. So let's go to the nightcap, Harrison, which is funny enough, if you've been watching SEC baseball for any amount of time, you know that this game, which is scheduled to start, I believe, at 9 o'clock, it's probably going to start at midnight. Let's just call it or probably 11 p.m. Eastern, something like that, which is fun. Hey, I'm sure we're going to get rain delays. I know we're going to get rain delays at some point. Either I'll be way. there for 12 hours, 15 right. hours. However long it takes, Harrison says he's going to be in the stadium. Uh, what about a nightcap, though, Harrison? I mean, what a nightcap. We have Mississippi State and Ole Miss, the five seed against the 12. Of course, State being the five, Ole Miss being the 12. But, I mean, you talk about a, a, a first day in Hoover with this rivalry, one of the best rivalries in college baseball, rivalry renewed in Hoover. I am going, though, Harrison, with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. I, I love what Chris Limonis has done. 
after I called for his job back in February. My goodness, the way they turned it on. Uh, I know some state fans were a little salty about losing that game. I believe it was Sunday, uh, or excuse me, Saturday to Missouri, but still, they won the series. Uh, and Ole Miss coming off, I believe they were swept by LSU, if I recall correctly. So, I, I like State a lot. I think they're going to uh, get the job done. And uh, th- th- But this is going to be a fiercely competitive ball game. Can't wait to watch it. Yeah, Chris, I'm right there with you. I'm going Hale State. I just I think the pitching is significantly going to overpower hmm. Miss, Ole Miss by far. I just, you know, Cal Stevens, I mean, I assume he probably starts game one unless it's Gerangelo Sinjin, who good luck hitting a guy throwing 90, <laughs> 90 plus from both sides with several breaking balls from both sides. I mean, just their pitching staff has been phenomenal and very consistent. And I think it's just, it's going to be way too much for Ole Miss to handle. I mean, it's, it's so it's, they've, they've been there all season. Yes. They kind of stumbled down at the end. They're kind of, they have a lot to play for too. I mean, they could potentially still host. I mean, they're on that bubble of hosting. And so that's a big motivator for them. And that pitching staff, I think pitching travels, good pitching travels, I believe. And they have the second best pitching staff OPS wise for their opposing hitters. And I, I just think that's a huge deal for them, and it's going to really shut down the hottie toddy lineup. So let's go to day two, Harrison, in Hoover, Alabama, and this is where our top four seeds are going to take the field. Obviously, if you're a top four seed, you do get a first-round buy. And the first round, guys, in case you did not see it on the bracket or in case you missed it, it is single elimination in day one. So if you lose day one, you're out. You get to day two. We start the double elimination play in the top four seeds of play. So Game number five, game number one of day two. Again, like I mentioned, I'm going to try to make this not confusing as possible. And you see the bracket, by the way. The three-seed Kentucky uh, in my bracket, Harrison, is going to take on the 11-seed LSU. I do have Kentucky winning this ball game. Who wins game five in your bracket? Yeah, Chris, I, it's the Georgia Bulldogs going on a little run here in Hoover. I, I just think I just think that <laughs> they got a lot to play for. They're, All right. They're coming hot. I think they're going to have, you know, that. I think that bye – is going to trip up a couple of these top seeds potentially. And it might be a Kentucky team who isn't used to having a buy in the SEC tournament. So, I mean, I, I think it's going to be another hard fought game. I think it's going to come down to pitching in the bullpen late, but I think just George has a couple extra hits in them late in the game to, you know, score some guys and run and score some runners in scoring position. Another Kentucky doubter. Another Kentucky Anything can doubter. Happen in Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> not a Kentucky doubter. Not a Kentucky doubter whatsoever. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, all right. The two seed Arkansas in the following game. This is game number six. Uh, two seed Arkansas in my bracket, Hibberson. I've got them taking on Alabama. You've got them taking on South Carolina. Do we both have Arkansas advancing? I've got Arkansas winning this ball game. Do you have the Gamecocks pulling the upset? Chris, we do not have the Gamecocks pulling the upset. We have the Arkansas Raising backs, the winners of the SEC West the past five of the six years under Dave Van Horn winning this game against South Carolina pretty handily, I think. It's going to be interesting to see who they start because, you know, no Brady Tiger last week and then Mason Molina coming out of the pen, which he shoved out of the pen. It, it was really great to see him pitch really well against a very, very good a lineup. So not sure they're going to start, but I just think that the pitching is going to overpower South Carolina's lineup that hasn't been as consistent. But you can't say that Arkansas lineup is that great either, but behind – a lot of bats that they had that have come up recently, like Hudson White. It's just, I think they're going to outpower on both sides, the Gamecocks. I wonder on a side note, do the Gamecocks see Hagen Smith? I, I wonder, do they throw Hagen Smith in this ball game? He would have pitched, of course, Thursday of last week, and this will be a Wednesday game. So I, I would that's, imagine it's going to be Hagen Smith. That's the biggest thing is like, how are teams going to pitch their starting rotation in Hoover, right. you know, especially these teams with the first round bye. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see, and that's something to, I think, keep your eye on the most of anything in this tournament. So we go to the afternoon games. The number one seed, Kentucky Wild – or excuse me, Kentucky Wild – Tennessee Volunteers, I apologize. The number one seed, Tennessee Volunteers, taking on the winner of game three, Vandy in Florida. So in my bracket, Harrison, I've got Tennessee taking on Florida. Give me the Tennessee Volunteers in this one. Chris, we're riding, we're riding the same train right here, and I got Tennessee as well. And I just, be, I think it's because of the pitching. I think you have more confidence in whoever Tennessee starts, mm-hmm. and if it's their main guy, you know, if it, it really doesn't matter. It could be Drew Beam, it could be you know AJ Cosby, it could be whoever. But I just think that you're going to be get a consistent outing more so from a Tennessee pitcher pitcher to start than a Florida in a game two. But it's really going to come down to who can whose bullpen steps up because both these offenses are just so lethal and so powerful. And to me, who can keep the ball in the ballpark? So I got so we're, going, 
So we're going all chalk right now on these top four seeds thus far. But we get to the final game, the nightcap. I, I picked Georgia over I, Kentucky. That's right. That's right. You did. I apologize. That's right. You did. The four seed Texas A&M. I've gone chalk, I guess. The four seed Texas A&M taking on in my bracket, the winner of game four, or in your bracket as well, Mississippi State. So four seed A&M, five seed Mississippi State. Harrison, it's the SEC tournament. Anything can happen. Teams are desperate. Give me Hale State to pull the upset. This is where I'm going against the grain again. I know it's a five or a four, so it doesn't feel like a huge upset. But with the way Texas A&M is playing, I think State's going to get done. I think this is where we see Gerangelo Sinjin. I think this is where he takes the bump. I think he's going to give them one hell of an outing. I think they're going to upset Texas A&M. I, I like it, Chris. I really do, except I don't have the same result happening. And I, I mean, if it does, it's going to have to happen on the backs of Hunter Hines. And, and like you said, Jaranzo Sinjin, if he pitches game two, I think this would be a really, really great matchup if it happens. But I mean, Cal Stevens would be a great matchup as well. But uh, just the bats at a and m lineup, I think are more consistently better than Mississippi State. And they're just riding this tournament hot, right? Their whole lineup stacked. They had a fantastic series where they took care of business pretty well against an Arkansas team. They... And I just, I just don't run see ruled them in the final one. game. Run yeah, ruled them in the final game. Yeah, on Senior Day, I just, I just don't see them losing Game One. I think it's gonna be a really close game, but I think, our, I think, A and M kind of pulls away late, six, seventh inning. They have a, you know, a four or five spot. So give me the, give me the Aggies. Hammerson, let's go to Thursday. So Game One of Thursday is the loser of Game Five against the loser of Game Six. Okay, so for me, I've got LSU taking on Alabama. And in my loser of game five, loser of game six, game one on Thursday, LSU-Bama, I do have the LSU Tigers, who, again, are in desperation mode, winning this ball game. Harrison, who wins game one of Thursday in your bracket? Yeah, Chris, for me, it's between the Kentucky Wildcats, Wildcats and the South Carolina Gamecocks, and I just have Kentucky beating the Gamecocks. I just have... The offense is significantly better and more consistent. They steal the most bases in the SEC at 53, I believe it is, which is double digits more than second place team. So I just I think they're going to be kind of woken up with it after the first round loss or day two loss to Georgia. And I just I they they've proven more this season than South Carolina. And I just think they end up South, they just take care of business. You know, and I think it's kind of I think they kind of handle them pretty well. I think it's going to be like a seven two seven three game. So game two of Thursday, guys, you can see the top of the bracket, by the way. This is the loser side of the bracket. Bottom of the bracket is the winner side of the bracket. Why did they make it that way? We're asking oh, ourselves no. the same question. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so game two of Thursday, loser of game seven versus loser of game eight. For me, this game is Florida against Texas A&M, and I have got the Texas A&M Aggies taking down the Florida Gators. I do think A&M is going to bounce back in this one. I don't think they're going to go two and Q and Hoover. I just don't think Florida's got enough. I, I just It feels like at no point this season have they had enough. Uh, I'm going to go with Texas A&M. Who wins your uh, game 10, loser of game seven, loser of game eight in your bracket, Harrison? Yeah, Chris, for game 10 for me, it's between Florida and Mississippi State. And I, I have Florida. I just have the offensive power. It's just going to continue. Pitching's... They're going to find a way, whether it's Kevin O'Sullivan just throwing four or five guys out in, in kind of a bullpen makeshift game. But I don't know. I think I just I think Florida might have something going in Hoover, and I'm just going to ride the offense. I I, I really like Mississippi State and just the full body of their of their team pitching and hitting. But I just think that I think they shut down Hunter Hines, and that's going to be enough to overcome them in the pitching staff for Mississippi State. Harrison, the afternoon games on Thursday. We get back to the winner's side of the bracket. Winner of game five against winner of game six. This is the 530 Eastern, 430 Central game on Thursday, game number 11 in the tournament. In my bracket, I've got Kentucky taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is going to be a fantastic game. We already saw this series take place. Give me Kentucky. I'm going Kentucky. I think Arkansas's hitting will falter them once in this tournament. At least once. I think it'll be this game. I like the Kentucky Wildcats, which would put them, by the way, right there in the semifinals, right? You win your first two games as a top four seed. You're in the semifinals on Saturday. I like Kentucky here. Arkansas jumps back into the loser side of the bracket. Who do you have in this game 
Uh, winner side of the bracket, game number 11 in your bracket. Yeah, Chris. So for game 11, it's for me, it's Arkansas and Georgia. And I just have Arkansas winning based off of pitching. I think they have enough pitching, whether it's in the bullpen, combining kind of a several different guys. If it's a bullpen game, similar to how they did against Arkansas, maybe Mason Lena coming back out of the bullpen. And I think they just have enough to overpower Georgia's offense in a kind of different style than they really seen pitching wise. Maybe this is where you see a Hagen Smith. You never know it, depending on how Davian Horn kind of does the starting rotation for the tournament. That's going to be the biggest thing, like I said. And I, I just think the experience in the postseason is going to be big for them. And I think Davian Horn is going to lead the Razorbacks past Georgia in this game. Haverson, let's go to the final game of Thursday. This is the winner of game seven versus the winner of game eight. Overall, this is game number 12 in Hoover. In my bracket, I've got Tennessee taking on Mississippi State. Again, winner of this game jumps straight to the semis on Saturday. Loser of this game uh, has to play an elimination game on Friday. Harrison, there's listen, there's some teams that do well in Hoover, and there's some that don't. And I'm not saying Tennessee doesn't do well in Hoover, because they do. They won this thing, I think, two years ago. But when I think of Hoover and winning SEC tournaments, Mississippi State's got another gear, man. Give me Hale State. They're going to be the team that goes on a run. They pull off the upset again against Tennessee. And uh, I've got Mississippi State advancing. Tennessee still alive, but having to go to the loser side of things, having to play out of the bracket where they're going to be facing elimination. Mississippi State pulls the upset. Who you got in this ball game? Winner of game seven, winner of game eight. What does this look like in your bracket? And who wins? Yeah, Chris, winner of game seven and eight is going to be Tennessee versus AM. And I think a power packed game with a lot of offense, with some st- with some starting pitching early on that's going to kind of keep it quiet the first couple innings. But at, when it comes down to it, give me the volunteers. This consistency that they've been playing at all season. Tony Vitella has the boys rolling into the postseason. Yes, they're not playing at Lindsey Nelson, but just they've been so consistent on both sides of the ball, let alone the offense. And I just think it's going to be a slugfest, and they outslug a and I like it. Harrison, let's go to Friday. This is when things start getting real juicy, real fun. Oh, yeah. uh, Friday, this is the 3 p.m. Central, 4 o'clock Eastern game. Winner of game nine, loser of game 11, game number 13 in Hoover. I guess this would be considered the quarterfinals. Is that right? Quarterfinals, right? Uh, either way, we're getting down, right. to, yeah, getting down to the nitty-gritty. Winner of game nine, loser of game 11. In my bracket, Harrison, this is the LSU Tigers taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. I do have Arkansas winning this. I think LSU's run. <laughs> I, I think LSU's going to say LSU. I think LSU's run comes to an end. I just don't think they've got the arms. I don't think they have the horses in the stable to keep up with Arkansas. Uh, I think the cream rises to the top, and that is the Arkansas for me. Who's in this game in your bracket, and who wins? Yeah, Chris. Game thirteen, winner of game nine, loser of game eleven for me is Kentucky versus Georgia, and this is where I have Kentucky kind of biting back and getting getting them some little range right here against Georgia. I think it's going to be primarily based on the fact that Georgia runs out of pitching. I mean, I think Colton Smith's done a fantastic job outside of the rest of their staff. I mean, their bullpen, I think, is really going to run in trouble. And I just think Kentucky's bats consistently are going to swipe some more bags. They're going to learn from the mistakes losing to Georgia on Wednesday. And I think they're going to win it here in advance. So let's go to the later game on Friday, Harrison. This is the winner of game 10, loser of game 12. I would imagine this game, well, depends on rain delay, right? It could start at 9, 10, 11. We have no idea. Either way, it's it's, it's the late game. Again, winner of game 10, loser of game 12. This is officially game 14 in Hoover. In my bracket, I have the Texas A&M Aggies taking on the Tennessee Volunteers. This is for a spot in the semifinals. Oh, Rocky Top, you'll always be. I've got Tennessee taking down Texas A&M, like you mentioned. So I've I've actually got the Tennessee A&M matchup, just I think a game later than you do. So I do think these two teams meet up, to your point. I think it's a slugfest, but I do think Tennessee is going to outlast Texas A&M. This could be a 12 to 10 ball game, 10 to 8, whatever it might be. Give me Tennessee to advance to the semifinals. Harrison, who's in this game in your bracket and who wins? So game 14 for me is the Texas A&M Aggies and the Florida Gators. 
And Chris, this is where the magic runs out for Florida. I believe. Oh, I, just, I thought I you. Just, both of us, I, I think both of us thought we were going to go the other way with the LSU and the Florida picks. So. <laughs> yep, yep. And I just, for me, it's pitching. I just think that AM's pitching staff and bullpen's a lot deeper. You know, Chris Cortez, the bullpen, I think he's got one of the, be the some of the best stuff of any bullpen pitcher in the conference. And just the 98 mile hour heater he throws, a 93, 94, I believe, mile an hour sinker that just falls on the table. It's, it's unbelievable. Whether he gets a long start or something, or like a Shane Sado, who's had three career starts this season all of the past couple of weeks, and he's done incredible. The dude doesn't walk anyone. He's got less than one walk per nine innings. It's unbelievable. And I just think he's going to – maybe it's him starting or who not. I think a &M just has a little bit more pitching and the consistency of pitching than Florida, and that's where they're, they're kind of running Hoover runs out. But I think it's enough to get into the tournament, though, for Florida mm -hmm. for sure. So, Harrison, that brings us to semifinal Saturday. We'll have a pair of games to determine who is playing in Sunday's SEC tournament championship game. We start on Saturday. This is noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Officially, it's game 15, but the winner of game 13 against the winner of game 11 in my bracket. It is Arkansas taking on the Kentucky Wildcats in, I believe this would be, no, not a rematch. Not a rematch. They did play in the regular season, though. Uh, Arkansas and Kentucky, I think we're going to get a rematch of a fantastic series in the regular season. I got to go Arkansas, though. I, I, I just, I do think Arkansas bounce back. Like I mentioned, I think their hitting is going to let them down once. I don't think it'll let them down twice, right? I, I think the pitching is going to be there, and I think Arkansas will do enough to advance to the championship on Sunday. Who do you have in this game, and who's your winner? So, Chris, ironically enough, I do have Kentucky and Arkansas in this game as well. So, we had different paths to get there. But we both got there all the same. In different results, because I have the Kentucky Wildcats pulling off the upset over the Razorbacks. I said, I, I, I said he was sleeping on Kentucky. How wrong I was. How <laughs> wrong I was. Yep. And I, it's <laughs> it's predicated primarily on, I think, just the hitting for Arkansas runs out here. I think it comes up a little short here. I mean, Hud, Hudson White's been unbelievable to watch. Kendall Diggs, just they've been so hot of lately hitting compared to the rest of the full season body of work. But just the cleanness of baseball that Kentucky plays. They swipe a lot of bags. I think you're going to steal a lot of bags in Hoover. I think you're going to have a lot of opportunities to do so. The park plays big. That's going to help with getting runners in scoring position. And they've got, I think, more to play for than Arkansas. they got a lot more to prove. They, I still think that the Wildcats believe that a country is kind of sleeping on them. And they want to go out and win this thing in Hoover. And I think they do. And beat. I think they beat the Razorbacks in this game in advance. And by the way, Harrison, I meant to mention, because I was looking on my sheet and I got confused, but I did have – Kentucky and Arkansas playing a couple games prior to this in Hoover. It's tough to beat a team twice. I had Kentucky win in the first game. I think Arkansas gets their revenge. Again, tough to beat a team twice in the span of a couple days. Uh, the later game on Saturday. So, we've got our teams in the SEC title. Who will they be playing? Let's find out. Game number 16 officially in Hoover. This game is the winner of game 14 against the winner of game 12. Of course, guys, it's a single elimination. You don't need me to tell you that. In my bracket, Harrison, I've got the Tennessee Volunteers. Taking on Mississippi State. What did I just say? It's tough to beat a team twice. That's exactly what's going to be happening in this game. When Tennessee and Mississippi State, <laughs> I had them earlier in the bracket playing. Who did I have winning? I had Mississippi State winning this ball game. Tough to beat a team twice. I don't give a damn, though. I got Mississippi State. They're going to beat Tennessee twice to get to the title game. Give me the Hail State. Give me the Bulldogs. They go together with Hoover, man. They love playing in Hoover. They're going to get hot. Give me Hale State. Who do you got in this game and who's winning? So you betting against Tony Vitello? I'm betting against Tony Vitello. Clip it off. Someone <laughs> clip it off because I <laughs> – State's going to get hot. They're going to beat them twice. They're going to beat them twice. So game 16 for me is another rematch, but not between those two teams. It's A&M and Tennessee. And as hard as it is to beat a team twice, a and is going to pull it off. And they're going to beat Tennessee. I, I just I think they're going to not get beat twice. They're not going to let it happen twice, right? They're going to learn from some mistakes. I just I think that someone's going to have a huge hit in this game, right? It's going to be an eight-seven game. You know, a lot. It's late in the week. Bullpens are going to be depleted. A lot of arms being used. It's going to be just matchups, matchups. Who can last and who's just got the hot hand on the mound with the rock? And Brain Montgomery or Gavin Grahovic. The freshman and lead off well, one of those two guys is come up with a clutch hit, whether it be a double or a home run, and it's going to lift them over the Tennessee Volunteers in this and send the championship. So that brings us to Championship Sunday. Of course, winner of game 15, 
winner of game 16. This game taking place, and officially it's game 17 in Hoover, by the way. So we got 17 games of baseball to take in over the next week. Sit back, relax, and enjoy it, folks. Uh, Sunday, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. My championship, Harrison. I have the Arkansas Razorbacks, the champions of the SEC West, taking on the Mississippi State Bulldogs, a team whose coach I called for them to fire back in mid to late February so hot. before conference play even began. It's going to be a hell of a matchup. Great pitching duel. We don't know who they're going to throw, but I would imagine the pitching is going to dominate the day in this one. Mississippi State hoists the trophy. They didn't make a run and get this far to not win it all. I think Hale State gets the job done as the five seed. They take down Arkansas. There's my bracket. I'm done. Who you got in the championship? Who's winning this thing? I love a good Mississippi State run right here. I, I'm, I'm they love it. The it. dogs it love happen. Hoover. The dogs love Hoover. Don't let the dogs get hot, Harrison. That's all I'm Chris, saying. Think about it. If they go on to win this thing in Hoover, win the SEC tournament, they're hosting regional. They know postseason baseball at the dudes on the line. We need it. They need it. It's going to happen. If if <laughs> if they win this, Chris, I might just pull up pull up to Star Vegas and go. I, I might I might meet you there. Who knows? I might I meet we, you there. Okay. All right. Game seventeen for me. <laughs> I I really like that. It's not what I have, but I really like it. It's A and M and Kentucky. Hell Kentucky of a match. beat Arkansas in the semifinal. A and M beat Tennessee in the semifinal. Give me the Aggies in the championship. I just think the depth of the lineup is better than Kentucky's. As clean and as good as Kentucky is on defense and hitting side of the ball, their approach, just the experience in, of Coach Schlossenegel and Max Wiener, the pitching coach, and the, the players they had, they brought in the right players. They go on this run to, to stay hot through from the last regular season series against Arkansas in which they took control. I think they take this momentum to Hoover. They go on a run. They're the four seed. They're not the one seed with all the pressure of winning it. They get it a bye, and they're just – it's unbelievable. I think Evan Ashenbeck maybe starts in the championship and goes six innings, four hits, one run, eight Ks. And I think they shut down the Wildcats and take the SEC crown. So there you have it. I've got Mississippi State hoisting the trophy. Hammerson has the Texas A&M Aggies, both teams in the SEC West. So it's going to be a fun week, guys. Let us know your thoughts, your predictions. Who do you have winning it all? Going to be a lot of fun this week as we all sit back, relax, enjoy, watch college baseball. Harrison will be there in Hoover. Before we get out of here, Harrison, I know you've got here in our notes. I want to let you get to this. Uh, right now, I would assume this is right now, or is this, you can tell me, is this post tournament play? Your prediction right now for the 16 regional hosts. Uh, Give us your one through 16. I'm curious to hear you go through these. Yeah, Chris, this is right now just because so much can happen in conference tournaments in the SEC, mm -hmm. let alone ACC and every other conference. So it, SEC, you, it SEC goes to win. show how important the tournament is, too, because there's Absolutely. some teams that aren't in that could be in. So, yeah. Yeah, so going through the 16 regional hosts, in order of who I have being the national seeds, number one, a and M. I should think full body of work, and they've proven that this season they have the number one RPI, they have – the number one non-conference RPI, the number 12 strength of schedule. Number two national seed, Arkansas Razorbacks. The number two RPI as well. It kind of lines up. The quad one wins as well. Everything lines up. Kentucky, number three, after dropping the series, to, not the series, dropping the final game to Vanderbilt, dropped them down in RPI to third. Yes, they had the most quad one wins in D1 at 19 and six. It's unbelievable. Eight strength of schedule, but I just think that's, that game, losing that game was huge for them. So I think it's the th number three seed for them overall. Number four is going to be Kentucky, or Tennessee. They're number five RPI, but I think they're going to be number four national seed. Number five is I think going to be the champion of the ACC overall is North Carolina. They've just been a slow resurgence mm -hmm. in the national rankings and kind of just gotten hot late and had a fantastic second half of the season. They're fourth overall in RPI, 13th strength of schedule. Number six national seed is going to be Clemson. They've kind of fallen off a little bit late but I think they've hold on enough to they'll definitely host a regional. They'll be number six overall. Number seven, a team that not many people had a great high expectations for coming this season. It's going to be the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm. They're going to host a regional for sure. I might even be at that one if it's not Mississippi State. <laughs> and they're going to be number seven overall national seed, what I see right now. Number eight is going to be Florida State. Florida State's had a great season as well, a rejuvenation of a season too. They're eighth overall in RPI, and that's kind of where I – slaughtered them it's really fits right now for them 
So obviously anything can happen in the ACC tournament. Number nine is be Wake Forest. They coming off a loss against a lot series loss or sweep from NC State at NC State. So I think that drops them down a few, but they're still in my host regional top 10. Number 10 national season be Virginia. Number 11 is going to be Oregon State. I think you definitely have to have a West Coast, and they fit the mold and fit the bill for that. Number 12 is going to be NC State. They've really climbed the rankings of late. Top, they have 14th RPI. 13 is going to be Indiana State. Just Terre Haute Regional, they're number nine in RPI, and I just think it's good. they're going to host another regional. 14, Oklahoma, who's had a really great late surge into the season, 15th in RPI. Number 15, National Seeds, going to be East Carolina for my, prediction, my predictions. They're 16th overall in RPI, but I think they have just enough to host. And then 16. The last national seed to host a regional, I think it's gonna be Oklahoma State. I think it's just another kind of Midwest West kind of venue, and they fit the mold for what they're looking for from a regional team in a facility in RPI wise, or 17th in RBI in RPI. And so that's why I think they're gonna be the 16th national seed to host. Will Indiana State actually get postseason baseball at their home ballpark? Remember last year? Was it last year? I think they had some sort of something going on and could not. They were the host at, at Vander or somewhere. It was hosted at someone else. I think hosted at Vanderbilt yeah, or something like that, which, yeah, I mean, it's whatever. Um, yeah, going to be interesting to see Harrison how – Anything can uh, happen in postseason. Right. I mean, ball. well, and I was going to say how conference tournament week, too, affects this. Spadolin bids teams. are going to happen. Expect three or four. Yeah, we're going to see some teams climb. We're going to see some teams fall, and that's really the beauty of it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, guys, if you see Harrison around the Hoover Met, you see him at Hoover, Alabama, say what's up. Talk some college baseball. He'd love to. Absolutely. We're going to have full coverage right here the entire week of the SEC tournament and all postseason baseball, but certainly this week right here on SEC Unfiltered, guys. Really excited. It's going to be a fun week. Uh, Harrison, any closing thoughts as you get ready to embark on Hoover, Alabama? Expect upsets, expect a lot of great baseball, <laughs> and expect teams to go on a run. Yeah. It could be any one of your teams. It could be an eight seed, a nine seed. Expect chaos in conference tournaments. Well said. Guys, it's going to do it all for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Again, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure you check out the podcast wherever you get podcasts. Again, follow us on social media. We're going to be very busy all week long. And, of course, stay up to date with our website, secunfiltered.com for the latest from us. Also, check out our friends at Price Picks. Download the Price Picks app. Use the promo code SECU to get that first deposit match, but $100 against that pricepicks.com or download the app to get your first deposit match today using promo code SECU. For Harrison Fan Time, Chris Phillips, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Enjoy the week of college baseball in Hoover, Alabama, and we'll talk to you on the other side. 